Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecke. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And uh, this is the text. Uh, uh, these are the texts for, I can't, I've got to get this right, sorry, the fifth Sunday after Easter. And they are Acts 18, 1 through 4, and 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 18, uh, with Mark 9, 34 and 35 as the accompanying gospel text. We're continuing the matching up in the Acts during this Easter season of um, hearing Paul founding church, uh, congregations in various Roman Empire cities, and then of the first part of Paul's letters that he then writes subsequently after he's moved on back to those churches. So last week was Acts 17, Paul arriving at Thessalonica, and Paul's uh, the first part of Paul, Timothy, and Silas's letter back. Uh, and now this is uh, just a very brief text from Acts 18, uh, 1 through 4, which simply really mentions that Paul leaves Athens, he arrives at Corinth and founds a church there. Is interesting. Uh, you do hear the names and acts that show up in Paul's letter, especially Priscilla, who is, I think, also called uh, Prissa or Prisca, Prista. and and uh, uh, Aquila, Achaea, I'm not exactly sure. I think most people just say Aquila. Um, and But I really think then there's not a whole lot there in that text. So really the preaching text becomes 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 10 through 4. Excuse me, I can, I can, I can speak here. Not 10 through 4, that's kind of backwards. 10 through 18. And it's about divisions in the church and that the church uh, is one. And then it leads up to really the money verse from my perspective, which is 1 Corinthians 1 18. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I wanted to say one thing about that text before opening it up uh, to my partners here. And that is the NRSV's translation, the message about the cross. Earlier versions uh, translate it, the preaching of the cross. Both of them um, make a choice about what the, ge the genitive relationship that the Greek most simply would be translated the word of the cross. And I really prefer just to leave it open, the word of the cross. That is, is this the word about the cross or is this the message that the cross itself speaks to us? What's, what's the message the cross says? That the death of the Son of God is actually the most full revelation there is of who God is. This is, this is the um, paradox at the center of the Christian life. The death of God, that is the absence of God, is the most full representation of God. And this is a message that no one could have anticipated. That's why it's called foolishness. Uh, but it's also then the power of salvation. Yeah, that's really uh, that's a really good way to start, Rolf. And I would agree with you. I think the, uh, how did you put it, the money verse? is uh, yeah. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. And obviously, as always, uh, dear listeners, if you want to uh, extend the reading to, uh, you know, to go on further into chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians uh, on this beautiful message about the foolishness uh, and uh, the, 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 the power of the cross, uh, uh, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. That goes through verse 25. If you want to do that, you are certainly welcome to do that. You you are free uh, in Christ to to choose the readings that you <laughs> do for this week. Uh, I do want to I do want to go back just a few verses though to um, you know the the passage uh, about divisions in the church. So uh, starting with verse 10. Uh, first of all, I just think it's funny. I, I'm not saying this is part of your preaching or should be, but uh, verse 16, where Paul is saying, you know, I didn't baptize anybody uh, except Crispus and Gaius. Oh, right. I also did uh, baptize the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't know whether I baptized anyone else. Right? It's just kind of Paul's human, um, whatever, uh, mistakes coming through or, or his uh, his. His memory. Uh, I just think it's funny that that that, that remained in the epistle that remained in the text. Um, 
what I do want to say, though, uh, about that uh, more pertinently for uh, for preaching, is this idea that uh, it doesn't matter, you know, that that who baptized you or uh, you know uh, who what human leader you follow, right? I what I mean is that each of you says I belong to Paul or I belong to Apollos or I belong to Cephas, which is of course another name for Peter. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Uh, it, Paul's point being, right, it's not human leaders that we follow. It's Christ that we follow and in Christ's name that we're baptized. Uh, and so, you know, uh, making, doing what human beings so, have done through the generations, right, making a human being uh, kind of an idol, even a really good human being like Paul or or Peter, um, is not what we're called to do. Right? We follow Christ, and these human leaders are here to um, to facilitate to, or to uh, to encourage us, to build us up uh, in the faith, uh, to equip us for ministry, uh, not to become those that we follow. I appreciate uh, your noting uh, the um, human frailty of Paul. Um, he was much more interested in the argument that he was making than trying to remember how many people he had right. baptized. It's like, right, exactly. okay, okay, yeah, um, that was an aside I didn't even need to take, but right. oh yeah, there was one more. Okay, let me get back to the point. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's, there's sort of chasing a rabbit that I, I shouldn't have even glanced at, but the key point, and I said this last week, is that the closer we read these texts, the more they sound like we're talking about ourselves today. Yeah. What are the different divisions, the different uh, modifiers that we put before our identity as baptized in Christ? And when we start um, disagreeing over those modifiers, um, then we become those who divide Christ, who divide the body of Christ. And so largely here, what Paul is talking about that, you know, um, we believe this is actually isn't the first letter to the uh, uh, community at Corinth, though we receive it as uh, the first. Um, we believe that there was uh, another. And um, all of this is basically saying how in the midst of this incredible divide, division um, do we avoid being divisive? Mm -hmm. And that means paying attention to the reality that ancient Corinth is uh, a um, metropolis where people have come from all over because it is filled with various universities or philosophical thinkers, uh, mm -hmm. to not get anachronistic, mm -hmm. um, that they have great entertainment, um, that they have, uh, uh, it is the locus of the uh, commerce because it is located where everybody can get to and from. And so you have people literally coming from all over that region um, to think, to discuss, to be entertained, or to buy and sell. And so if you want to talk about diversity, there's diversity. And yet when these people hear this foolishness of a God who took on human flesh, who died and who rose again, and who the proof of that is these communities that are forming across the caste and class system. People are saying, I want to be a part of that. And, and so that becomes the wisdom of this world. Let's divide. Let's divide economically. Let's divide intellectually. Let's divide nationalistically. No, let's come together. And that, to use last week's word, is turning everything upside down. And that is foolish because we thought things were working well. Oh, no, this is what true unity looks like. And that's what Corinthians is all about. That's a really good reminder uh, is to take a minute, step back. And what is Corinthians all about. So, so in the narrative lectionary this year, um, last week we were just one week in First Thessalonians, but this week, next week, and the following week, um, we'll be in First Corinthians. So, First Corinthians one this week, First Corinthians thirteen next week, and First Corinthians fifteen. 
So um, the intro, the love chapter, and the resurrection chapter. Um, so one of the great things about Corinth and the first, the church there was a hot mess. And we <laughs> can be really grateful that it was a hot mess because then Paul, when he writes back, he, in order to address the divisions in the church, he goes back to basic Christian teachings that we might not know about if he hadn't had to write to Corinthians. That is, So we find out about the sacraments, we find out about Christian love, and we found out about the resurrection. Um, so he, note that in verses 10 and following, he says, look, there's disagreements about you. And actually what they're fighting about, one of the things they're fighting about is whose spiritual gift is more important than the other person's spiritual gift. We'll get that to next week. That's a really stupid argument to have. I just noticed something in the text that I've never noticed before. By the way, Joy said last week, it's the living word, and that's why we keep studying these. You'll learn something always. In verse 17, Paul says, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, that is to evangelize. And then in the NRSV, and not with eloquent wisdom, the Greek, and not in Sophia Logu, that is um, words of wisdom, word, which is the same in the next verse translated as message. So the, the, what Paul is in his own, he's contrasting. This is not wise words, Sophia Logo, but the word of the cross, mm -hmm. which um, destroys human wisdom. The idea being no human, no human, not one, not any Jew or Greek who had spent their entire life devoted to saying, what is God going to do next? Could ever have thought the thing God's going to do next is God's going to become human in a Jew and suffer and die and be raised from the dead. No one could have thought that. Well, what does that mean? That means then that we are dependent on this moment of revelation, which should humble us all. And in that humility, we shouldn't let secular divisions or spiritual divisions keep us from loving each other.